All right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting, hit scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. I am your host, and you know what I'm here about another crazy story that makes no sense to anybody. This one is one that happened back in the early 70s, around 1971, as a matter of fact. But first, just like every other video, like what I mentioned it before, I want to leave you guys with a quote to help you think and open up your mind some more. Sorry I didn't get it together before I started, but you know, you know how I do. I'm very, uh, what do you want, what do you call it? Um, well, I can't think of the word right now, but you'll get what I'm saying after a while. Okay, I want to leave you guys with a, with a quote that'll help you think. Let me just find the right one. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I'll leave this. I'll, 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 this will be for all the nature lovers out there. And the ones who love, who have a green thumb and like to take care of, you know, the earth and plants and all that stuff. Giving life to something that deserves to live is a healer of the earth. Think about it. Now, if you're one of those people that like to take care of plants and keep them alive and just like to have a garden, you could be one of those people. You never know. Okay? Because I can tell you right now, there are things that we all have a special ability. You know, there are things that we do that could be looked at as a special ability. You know, and it may be something that you probably noticed when you was a child that you was able to do, like see ghosts. Or maybe you hear the wind speaking to you like I do. Um, or just anything that you thought that you could not, that anything that you saw yourself do back then that you can't seem to explain now. But I guarantee you, it will come to fruition sooner or later. I guarantee you. But anyway, I'll leave you guys with that little quote. I may say another one towards the end, but who knows. Oh, and by the way, at the very end of this video, I'm going to do a Q&A session, a live session for the ones that have questions about what I am going to deeply talk about at the very end of this video. So stay tuned. It's coming up at the very end. You're going to love it. <sighs> I'm telling you, it's going to be great. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Don't want to ramble too much. Now, like I said before, this story is about a, a man who disappeared um, you know, at a place called Rims Village. This was at Crater Lake as well. <clears throat> now, there has been numerous other disappearances reported from the Crater Lake area, but this one was in 1971, as I mentioned before. His name was Nick Carlino, an Italian guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, this guy is, uh, like I said, Nick Carlino of Grants Pass, Oregon. Now, he went out snowshoeing along with his uh, pet German Shepherd dog <clears throat> just west of Rim's village, or Rim Village. Now, when the dog later returned without its master, a search was put together by his wife at the time. Um, uh, uh, now, like I said, uh, she launched the search which followed uh, the man's uh, shoe, uh, snowshoe prints to the edge of the rim of the crater, Crater Lake Crater, where they abruptly stopped. No trace of the man was ever found. This case is eerily similar to another more recent case uh, from 2009 when a man, who, uh, a man whose identity has been withheld, <clears throat> uh, been withheld rented uh, snowshoes hiked out to the edge of the uh excuse me of the caldera rim and stepped off the face of the earth again prince led to the edge and disappeared authorities believe that uh he had fallen over the pre precipitous a uh, the precipitous uh, ledge uh and then plummeted 1000 feet down the yawning the yawning chasm below uh, to his death 
Yet when the search team scoured the area where he was uh, where he was expected to have fallen, there was no trace of him or his belongings. Searchers on boats dredged the bottom of the lake and divers scoured the lake as well, but no sign of the man, uh, his belongings, or even his snowshoes was ever found. Very, very, very creepy and mysterious. Now let's think about this for a second. This kind of also reminds me of the Stephen Kubacki case. Because think about it. We're talking about Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan froze over. I don't know how deep and I don't know how hard the ice was. But this man's footprints were uh, viewed going from the edge of the lake all the way out to the middle of the lake. Now, I know for a fact that, you know, with the tide and waters and waters waving over each other, when it freezes over, it causes these little caps or like, you know, a little like, the like small like cliffs that just kind of freeze on top of each other, creating these layers that some layers may kind of go deeper underneath the ice where the, where the water is, or it just may overlap each other. So not all of the ice could be at level, and maybe some parts are thin, maybe some parts are thick. But his footprints were found leading all the way out to the middle of this darn lake. Okay? After that, nothing. It's like he literally vanished into thin air right there on that spot. Now, a lot of people said that maybe it was an alien abduction because he was later found, or he found himself... In a field 500, I think it was like 500 miles or maybe 80 miles away from where he was last seen as far as his footprints. The man was found, well, he, wait, when he woke up, he found himself in clothes that he didn't recognize. There was a knapsack with a bunch of maps in it next to him that weren't his. And the knapsack wasn't his either, I don't think. But he walked over, up to his father's home his father's home and run the doorbell and bam there it was now this man had been missing i believe for almost a year six months to a year as a matter of fact i believe and he is fine but he doesn't want to talk about anything that he experienced because anybody that was to come to him saying that you need to do hypnotic regression he says no i don't want to do that because i'm not crazy this ain't got nothing to do with you being crazy. This got something to do with you helping others that may have gone through what you went through and have no memory of what happened. So if you can tell us what happened, then maybe we can share some light on the subject. But he's not talking. And this is the even crazy part. He went to school to be a psychiatrist. So I would think that he would want to open up and do the right thing and help other people go uh, help other people get over or cope with what they went through especially if they know that somebody else went through the same thing then they realize that they're not alone they're not alone but that is not happening and i don't know if big politis actually got a chance to well he tried to get in touch with him but he never answered any of his calls he never responded to any of his letters nothing so i mean if he he's pro he's obviously okay but at the same time like i said he doesn't want to talk about it but anyway that's really all they got on that story but let's go back to that though like I said, the fact that he his footprints were found walking, or his footprints were leading up to the edge of this caldera, crater lake, and it just stops right there. So he either lost his footing and fell over into the lake of this caldera, and if okay, let's by it being a, a dead volcano. Obviously, there might be there might be a hole that leads down into the area where the lava was coming from. So, this is just an educated guess. But maybe when he fell in the water, he got sucked into this hole where the where the lava came from. I mean, this is basically a, a a dormant lava tube. So maybe there was some type of rush of um, like maybe a you know a, a, a rushing flow of water from like maybe another end of where this where the water was coming from or whatever i don't know somehow may he may have gotten sucked into this this tube like thing where the lava came from and he was never found now did, did did the divers go into that hole if there is one 
I don't know. They didn't mention that part. They just said they scoured the area. They couldn't find him at all. He, he was just gone. So I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, there was a portal underneath that water. Or maybe that there was a portal inside that, that tunnel where the lava came through, you know, the lava tube. Like I said, I don't know. That's just an educated guess. Now, because uh, I've heard of other situations where these, lo like, you know, like, you know, um, the Plesiosaurus, like this monster. Uh, they think that maybe they come through portals underneath the water, which is why you can't never seem to find them in the water when people are looking for them. But maybe they're just not meant to actually be located or found. Even though you may see, you know, like visions of them in the water. You see that little hump and maybe some people have said they've seen the head come up out of the water, turn and then go back down in the water. A few, a full view, but without a camera. When stuff like that happens, I just think that when you can't find, when you can't record these things or take pictures of these creatures when you want to, I think they got a lot to do with the fact that they're not meant to be recorded, let alone, t you know, like snap, it's, you know what? You know you're not meant to take pictures of them as well, because maybe it's just the natural order of things. I don't know, but that's just my personal opinion. But now is the time for uh, for me to get to the main point of what I want to talk to you about tonight. This is a story that everybody likes to hear about. If you are familiar with Egyptian culture and the hieroglyphics on the Egyptian walls. And I'm pretty sure all of you have heard about the Anunnaki and who they are depicted as on these walls. Now, let's start off with what you see from the photos that you see on TV, like, say, with ancient aliens and stuff like that. You know, because they, they will have pictures from the Egyptian hieroglyphics on the walls of these beings with thick curly beards, helmets on their head and wings on their back. What I want to get to tonight is the truth about the Anunnaki and who they really were and why they were here and mating, which was a big thing that not too many people knew about. Okay, now they had to ask the creator. Now, you know, the creator is God, but that's a better, you know, um, description of God. I mean, that's just a word, but creator is a better word for that because that's what he is. That's what the creator is, a creator of all things. So get away from the word God and use the word creator. That's just my opinion. But anyway, they had to ask the creator if, uh, you know, for that. But they, had, they wanted to have permission to be able to, you know, have that opportunity. Some were granted that opportunity and some weren't. OK, now um, they called those people who they wanted to mate with um, the ones that were made for them. That's what they called them. OK, now, once again, I want to make sure you guys understand that this information that I get is coming from Gabriel, the person that I mentioned last night, who is a being of energy. OK, he is also a guardian angel just like my guardian angel Peter okay um, but I don't want to get too far ahead with every with, with most of the stuff I want to just kind of keep everything flowing the way I, I wanted it to flow okay so also there's a part in the history of the Anunnaki where they just left and never came back now when they left they were separated from them, which would be the ones made for them, their mates. All right. Now, um, the time now because of that, the time has come for them to be reunited, to be reunited with their mates. Now, Gabriel does have a mate. She knows about him and they speak on a regular basis. Now, I myself came to know him. I met him personally face to face. And I can actually channel him and talk to him. And I can talk to him through his mate because she channels him too. Okay. So, with that being said, 
you may believe this, you may not, but this is nothing but the truth because this is coming from a source that would know the ultimate truth. And it is time for this to get out. It has been kept from history for far too long. And that's why I am here. Okay. I didn't know before, but I know now that that's the reason why I created my channel. To bring out the truth. And it starts with the people that disappear mysteriously in national parks. Because there's so many different levels as far as what happens to them. You know, you can either think logically about it. Or you can think beyond what you would think is logic and I would rather think that way because that's more truthful than anything else because the truth has been kept from us for so long we don't know the truth when we see it other than what they have put together for us to see with our own eyes they clouded everything with a truth that they wanted us to only know about now moving on um, when their mate was created for them their mate was created with part of them inside of them kind of like adam and eve because remember eve was created from uh from adam's rib okay so she he a part of him was in her which is how she was created so it's the same thing all right now that is how they are connected to each other or connected to their mate and that they were granted human forms because their mates were human so they do have a human form Okay, now I want to talk about that a little bit too. Now I said that Gabriel is a guardian angel, and so is my guardian. My guardian angel, uh, they have a human form. Okay, and when you see them, you see what they look like. Now I have been told that they have different a different look for every one person on this planet because they do have more than one charge. And I'm not talking about money and i'm not talking about the movie i mean the tv show charmed charges meaning other people that they look after and protect and you know and keep safe um now um let me sure i'm in the right spot here okay okay also i wanted to get into the subject of fallen angels i know a lot of people talk about that too but just to finish what i was saying before about you know the mates and them being human like i said when i told you the other night well last night as a matter of fact that i saw gabriel with my own two eyes and i saw peter with my own two eyes he was literally walking down the street and he towered the street lights that is just how tall he is and he was wide not like fat white, but just he, he just had a very broad figure, you know, or physique rather. Okay. And his energy is so intense. Okay. When he hit me with his energy one time, I just literally jerked because he just it just flew through my body so fast and so hard. It was just like one of those moments where you just gasp, you know, but it, it was a good feeling because it was something that I never felt before. And that's what I like. I like Feeling things and learning about things that I've never heard before, seen before, or felt before. So it was all new, but I liked it. It was incredible. Feeling energy like that just, whew, it just sent me over the top. Not, you know, you know, in a cycle way, but you know what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, the same thing with my with my uh, guardian angel Peter. The first time I saw him was when I was 17, and that was there's a story behind that about me having um, insom insomnia, you know, but that same night, when I was 17, living in Virginia, I asked to see my guardian angel because I never saw him before. And he appeared to me that night. And if I said it before, I'll just repeat it just so you guys will understand where I'm coming from. That night I had insomnia for two weeks straight and it was taken away from me that night when I read the 23rd Psalm. My mom told me to read it. You know, I'm 17 years old, so you know, whatever. I read it. it I actually went to sleep that night for the first time in two weeks. I was awakened by this blinding light hovering or just sit like hovering or sitting there or whatever in the center of my bedroom and i and it woke me up because you know if somebody it's just like somebody shining a flashlight right in your face while you sleep and then you just instantly wake up that's kind of like, like how it was so when i wake up and i see this light just shimmering like it kind of reminded me of like glowing spider webs 
you know, it had that streaky thin look to it, but it was just kind of shimmering all over the place. Like, like say if you had a ball, like a, like say a, like a rubber ball or a metal ball with tentacles on it, and it was just flung, it, and the ball was just spinning in all these different directions, but all you could really see were the tentacles, you know, extended out in in all directions. That's kind of like how it looked, but it was, all, like I said, it was just all just like this brilliant light. And as that was happening, Gabe, oh, not Gabriel, but Peter. I can, sometimes I do that because I'm connected to Gabriel, so his voice, his name sometimes pops out of my mouth by accident. But anyway, I saw Peter literally come out of this portal because I thought it was just a light, but it turns out it was an actual portal he was coming through. I saw everything from his hair down to his waist. I saw his robe. I saw his wings. I saw his, the you know his curly hair. He had really, uh, squared squared shaped face you know a square face of with i don't know what the, the term for that they had called but anyway he had very sharp facial features a big bright smile he reaches down at me because he was you know hovering above me he reaches down at me i raised my arms up to him we you know he you know we grabbed each other's hands you know or he grabbed my hands and his he smiled at me and just disappeared along with that light now here's the crazy part when everybody talk about the laws of physics, if you shine, if you turn on a flashlight and shine it on the wall, what happens? It casts light on the walls. This portal didn't do that at all. The light was just basically within that one part of space in my room. Okay. And, but it didn't cast any light. And it kind of reminded me of... Um, that's a scene in my favorite TV show, TV show that I talked about in my previous video about sliders starring Jerry O'Connell. Well, you, this portal opens up in front of him. You can see how the portal looks. You, know, you see these blue and white streaks coming out of the portal and curving back towards the edge of this tunnel. But there was this ripply ring around the tunnel itself. So when he walks behind it, all he sees is how the environment in that one space was ripply and like it was just moving like as if someone dropped a pebble in the water you know how it ripples out in a circle that's kind of like how it looked but it was constant it just kept rippling and rippling and you could see his face being distorted you know behind it and that's kind of like what i saw because the light was in the front but obviously in the back it just didn't have any light behind it or that there was no way physics could tell you how it was able to n not do that. And, and, and when I say that, I mean not cast any light on the walls. But I just know that it happened because I saw it with my own two eyes. I wasn't asleep. I didn't smoke weed at that time. I still don't. You know, so I was perfectly sane, 17 years old. So, you know, I was young. But I saw it with my own two eyes. So, with that being said, moving on to the next topic. This topic is about, I mean, it's the same thing, but it's a different topic. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Now, the fallen angels. Yeah, okay, the fallen angels. For whatever you already know about fallen angels, I'm here to tell you right now, and this is what Gabriel has told me himself. Okay. Um, he says that they have come, well, we have come to learn and know about uh, know about them as angels or guys they are none of those things etc none of those things i'm just just let you know right now they're not fallen angels they never were angels or gods okay but they have been called many names throughout history but their true nature <clears throat> has been erased from history so for those of you who learned about you know Fallen angels and everything, get that out of here because that's not what they are at all. Now, there's a reason uh, why I am talking to you about all this stuff. And the reason is, like I said before, it is time for you to know the real truth. Okay? And like I said before, the truth has been hidden from you and me, you know, which is why. I know now that I am the messenger of all truth. Okay. So 
whatever you have learned in history in history class or any other books that you may have read you need to get away from that I'm just letting you know right now because after finding this stuff out I know to be true because of the you know people often ask me how do you know that you have any proof is it was an analysis done did you talk to a scientist or Michiyu Kaku whoever it's not even about that it's about just knowing that it's true it's just a feeling that you get you just know that it's true and he has never lied to me before I'm just letting you know right now um, but that's what I'm here to do I'm here to get the truth out the real truth so whatever truth you think you know I can guarantee you it is nothing compared to what I know or and that, that, I'm pretty sure there's more people out there like me that know the real truth but they may not feel the way I feel about getting the truth out there you know they may be scared thinking that the government is going to come after them I'm not scared because I look back on <clears throat> when I did the interview you know the lady that had the experience in uh, Brown Mountain National Park she was harassed by the, by uh, the National Park Service there was a black SUV outside my house once, but they were a little too late. The darn video was already out there. 36,000 people have already seen it within six months. Now, this happened before those six, before I saw the 36,000, but still, the information was already out there, so it was too late. For you. So I'm, I'm saying to myself, why are you even outside my house? I mean, you're late. There's nothing you can do. Everybody already done seen it. So... They may be feeling like that, but I'm not. I'm not scared. Because I know within my heart of hearts that this information has to be told. It is time for the real truth to come out. And I am making sure that every one of you get this information. Okay? Now, the Anunnaki are not aliens. Just so you know. Just because they, you know, in, in the stories about the Anunnaki, they said that they called them, I think they called them... Uh, God, like sun guys or guys from the sky or whatever, or you know, but you know, other people have called them aliens. They're not aliens. Now, first of all, they come from another level, aka another dimension, another frequency, or a higher vibration. But they are referred to the same thing. Okay, so all that stuff about, you know, dimensional portals, frequencies, and they say, okay, they're aliens from outer space, but no, that's not what it is. So, whatever you understand about dimensional portals, or just other dimensions alone, or frequencies, there is a frequency that is constant. If your ears are ringing, that is a frequency. You may think, it's coming from a loud noise you may have heard previously and it's causing your ears to ring. No, that's not it. Now, that loud noise is a frequency or energy that carries a frequency, but I'm talking about the frequency around you. Now, where this frequency is coming from, I'm going to wait for another video to talk about that because that's a whole other subject. But there are frequencies out there that some people are not aware of. But if you feel something that doesn't seem right to you, like you just can't explain it, like your body starts to vibrate or you start to feel tingly all over, that's energy. Okay? You may not know, but that's what it is. You may think that you're probably getting sick or you're probably coming down with the flu because, you know, your body starts to kind of shiver a little bit, but you f everything feels tingly. You may have been subject to um, your body being thrust with a lot of energy. And it may have been your guardian angel. You may have actually walked through your guardian angel or he hit you with some energy that you're not aware of. You know, or you're not aware of the fact that that was energy. You just knew you felt weird. But if you don't understand it, of course, you're not going to know what it is. Honestly. Now, I myself knew about 
energies, but I didn't know what it did to the human body. All I heard about was what you saw on TV. How you like, you know, when you watch those cartoons or those movies or TV shows about people who become these like, you know, hyperactive, not hyperactive, but these like high level superheroes because of radiation and stuff like that. And it, that, that's all. That's all like, you know, stories that people made up. But there are energies that are that is a part of everything that we know. Like our bodies alone is energy. You know, down to your core, to the tiniest little atom, to to the tiniest little atom that makes up your entire genetic makeup, to the table that you're sitting at, or your computer. The components on the inside create an energy that. You you'll probably feel if you're sensitive enough to it. Then there's the energy of the atmosphere, the energy of the air, the energy of the earth. Okay? If you are fine-tuned to the earth, you will feel it. Now, that's another topic for another show. I'm not going to get into that right now because that's a whole other ballgame right there. But all I know is that guardian angels have more than one charge. That's what I said before. And I'm not talking about money or the or uh, the charmed ones, <laughs> you know, just to get away from that. That's not what I'm talking about. But charred is meaning other people that they protect and you know keep safe and stuff like that, and talk to if they know that they are being talked to. Now here's another thing: when you are going throughout your day, let's just say you're driving down the street and something is telling you to keep straight, don't go that way. And, but you want to go that way because may, maybe you have been going that way for a long time to get to somewhere that, you know, that's just the route that you take. But something keeps, keeps telling you, just go that way. Keep straight. Don't don't go that way. And you almost ignore it, but it, it just keeps coming back at you, coming back at you. And then you just say, you know what, I'm going to go this way. And then you find out a couple of hours later there was an accident that happened right there in that same spot where you was at. Think about it. Had you not listened to that voice in, you know, in your mind, that would have been you, or you would have been one of the people that was in that accident. Now, same thing happened to me. My guardian, Peter, who I thank every day for that. This is when I'm um, at my job. I was going home. I was working on the graveyard shift, so I was leaving around. I think no, I was no, I was working in the evening. I was leaving at twelve thirty. I, you know, I was driving on the street, and there was a route that I normally took every night to get home. It's just, you know, you learn a route, you just take it, and you just you stick with it. I was going to make that turn. I was right at the turn, but something kept telling me, don't go that way. Keep going straight. And I was ignoring it because that's the way I wanted to go. But it just kept coming at me, and it just kept coming at me, coming at me, coming at me, coming at me. It would not stop until I just said, you know what, I'm just going to keep straight. Soon as I got those words out my mouth and I was at the stoplight, a car comes careening in the opposite direction that I would have been traveling in. Now think about it. And he was going at he or she, whoever was going at top speed. Had I went that way, this person literally would have plowed right into me head on and killed me. I would not be here today doing this channel had it not been for Peter making sure that I did not go that way. So Ever since that day, I mean, I have my moments where I kind of make my own decision, you know, and that's just a human thing that just happens, you know, because we're used to making up our own minds. But I try my very best to make sure I listen to everything he's telling me. Now, a guardian angel can give you information, but he cannot intervene. Now, if there's a situation, yeah, they'll intervene because his job is to keep you safe, especially if he knows that you have a job to do on this earth. But they cannot intervene. They can tell you what you need to know. You have to walk that path. You got to make that decision to, to listen to him or her if he's trying to tell you something or if she's trying to tell you something. Now, it may sound like a tiny little voice in the back of your head. People, science would call that your um, inner voice. OK, or, those, or that little that little angel and that little devil on your shoulder, <laughs> you know. That's just the pictures that's been spread out through time, which is not real, by the way, just just to remind you guys. But anyway, but the one thing I want you guys to do, if you want to, now this is, like I said, this is if you want to find the time where, you know, you by yourself 
And in your mind, just say, I would love to see my guardian angel. I've never seen him or her before. And I would love to know your name. Now, I did that because the night when I had that little experience, after I read the 23rd Psalm, and before I went to bed, I said my prayers like I always did. And I asked at the time when I called God, God, um, I would love to see my guardian angel. I've never seen him. And I said him before. So it's almost like I knew that he was a he, but at the same time, I didn't. But it just came out. So in a way, he was always there. And maybe I was feeling the presence of a man, but just didn't know what that presence was or what that was. But it just came out. Maybe he was working through me to say it so that I can, so he can come for it or whatever. But this is what I want you guys to do. Say all that, okay, in your mind. And if you are ready, if he or she feels that you are ready, they will appear to you. Okay? In whatever way will make you believe that they are real. Now, I'm not saying that nobody out there believes in guardian angels. Because if you come out of a accident you probably should have died in or should have been in the hospital for like with me i have always walked away from every accident that i ever had most people would call that pure luck but i call that being saved by my guardian angel peter a being of energy and light but you know but light is energy so it really doesn't matter how you say it so when you do that and you hear start hearing a voice in your head the very first voice you hear, listen to it. Okay, do not deny it. Don't second guess it. Don't ignore it. Don't say, oh, I'm going nuts now. I'm hearing voices in my head like all these crazy people you hear about on TV and in, you know on the news. Did you ever stop to think that maybe they are experiencing the same thing, but it could be them going crazy because they never thought that that could ever happen? You know, some people can't handle that kind of stuff. They may think they're going nuts. And then they make the decision to do something crazy. Who knows? And then you got those people that be, like in those movies, where you have this this bum or this old guy standing on the side of the road with a cardboard cutout saying, the world is coming to an end. Act now, or whatever. Not saying that that's what that's all about, but maybe he was getting those same vibes or that same voice in his head but he didn't know how to go about it but he still put that out there that the world is coming to an end but it didn't come to an end but anyway that's a whole nother story but all i'm saying is what you know about what you believe is not the truth because the powers that be our government put all of this stuff in place for us to believe what they wanted us to believe because of the real truth of what's going on on our planet okay and all this stuff about history uh human history i would rather learn more about earth history and then all this information about the anunnaki gabriel and whoever else the history of them has been lost to history for thousands of years and we never knew about it we heard about it but what you heard got you know had like extra pieces added to it to make it more believable more believable to you as far as it being a story you know they don't want you to know that the anunnaki were actually beings of light or they made it they did they, they came here to experience what we would what we were experiencing you know mating with someone they wanted to be able to love they wanted to have children they wanted to have families they wanted to experience all that you know, but they had to leave. But that's a, like I said, that's a whole nother story. But just, like I said, all this information I'm giving to you is given to me by Gabriel himself. And yes, I said he, because he has the form of a human man. Okay? The man's got curly black hair. Okay? He has the face of a man. He looks like a man. You know, they ha he has that human male physique. Okay? He has a human form. That is, re that is the reason why whenever they talk about guardian angels, they have a face and they have arms and legs just like everybody else, but they just have wings on their back. Sometimes they're shown, sometimes they're not. Okay? When I first saw this man, for some reason, I kept looking at my front door. 
I don't know why, but something kept making me look at my front door. And no matter what I try to do, I try to ignore the the the, 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 the wanting need to look at my, my front door. But every time I would just cut my eyes at the door. And that last time when I finally did that, he was standing right there at the door. I saw him with my own two eyes. He was in his robe. He had on sandals. And he he was in full form. I saw his full form. He, you know, I was like, wow. Now I'm pretty sure you heard about, you know, the giants and guys and all this stuff like the, um, like um, the the, Olymp- the Olympus guys and all this stuff. How they were like, like what, two thousand feet tall? Like, in, like I said uh, last night in that movie, um, um, what's that movie? Uh, the Lightning Thief. You know, uh, Percy Jackson. His father, Prometheus, was like a skyscraper type height. Okay. Now. Gabriel has told me that they don't have a shape or a height, but they can grow to a very large size. And they can bring themselves back to their light energy form. You know, so they can change into these different, you know, types. Okay, they, like I said, they can also make themselves look human. They have a human form. So, and I believe that could be all. That could be because they, it's easy for them to do their job if they look more familiar to another human. Now, if they came to them as a ball of light, they would be like, okay, now I'm really going nuts. I'm seeing a ball of light in front of my face, you know. But they they do that so that you will feel comfortable around them, so you won't get scared. Because they're not going to understand why is there a ball of light in my face. But if they see a man who is depicted as an angel, a guardian angel, that makes things easier. They can do their job. And people won't get, be scared of them. So that's my personal opinion. But that's what I truly believe because, like I said, I experience these things. Okay, you have all already know I've had a lot of experiences from UFOs to ghosts. And I have seen my guardian angel face to face. So every aspect of the paranormal or the unknown and what is truly real or the real truth rather i've experienced it so i can tell you right here right now that this information is 100 percent truth 100 percent. you can't find this information in books history books textbooks magazines you can't even get this information from a scientist like Michio Kaku or whoever else be on those shows like um, uh, uh, the How the Universe Works. You can't get that information from them. You can only get it from the horse's mouth. Gabriel, Peter, or others like them. Okay? So. Now, to talk about other things. This is dealing with the... I said this earlier in my video that um, I want to do a Q&A with you guys a live video after this video is over so if anybody any one of you have any questions I will answer them to the best of my abilities okay now the information that I shared with you once again so that you it'll sink in I got this information for me Energy, uh, a being of energy Gabriel he told me this stuff personally okay I have channeled him a lot okay he sometimes speaks through me I helped a friend get over some situations because of Peter my guardian so I channeled him as well okay so they are here to help they are here to bring the truth out this is the reason why I'm telling you this because Gabriel knows that it's time for all of you to know the truth and I'm here to make sure you know the truth because this is the perfect way to do it. You send a message out there, billions of people all across the globe is going to see this if they look at YouTube on a regular basis. Okay? So, that is why I'm doing this. That's why I'm here. I want all my fans to know the truth. So, I hope a lot of the information that I uh, spoke about and told you uh, will help you understand 
the real truth, okay? Because you've been living, not so much you've been living a lie, but they cause you to live a lie by feeding you all this information that don't it it, it, it it isn't true, okay? When I started to get away from human history and started to talk, started to learn more about earthly history, that's when I started learning about um, energy beings, uh, dimensional travelers that people seem to think are demons or aliens or whatever. Now, I told you before that there are certain species of beings that don't look right to you because you've never seen stuff like that. Like uh, Anubis or any other uh, picture that's actually on the Egyptian walls where they have the head of a cat or a dog, but they have the body of a human. Now, there has been talk about how the Anunnaki was doing gene splicing, but that's not entirely, that's not actually, that's not true at all. There was this different species of beings that have, like I said, the body of a human, but the head of an animal. You know, and then you hear stuff about the um, Skinwalker Ranch and these shape-shifting beings that can go from human to animal. They think that has something to do with it, but like I said, there's different species and then there's the the uh, Navajo Indians or whoever else is on those reservations that believe in how you can become your animal spirit so all these stories all this information is tied together but initially I'm gonna just let you know right now the Anunnaki had nothing to do with that they talk about how they doing gene splicing and all this stuff creating all these different kinds of people you know and then you know they, they tried to say that they were doing the same thing with Bigfoot and you know the missing link and all that stuff me personally i think that bigfoot may be the missing link but i don't know that for sure but i'd have to talk to gator about that i think we did talk about that one time before but i can't remember all of what was said so i'd have to go through it again with him just to get that information you know correct but like i said everything you think you know about the Anunnaki, uh guardian angels and demons and all that stuff get that out of your head because if you let's just say you hear about this uh these like like the video the videos that that lady put out you know the one that i interviewed everybody has been talking about what these things are that's been seen in this video like that creature that you can only see a blur of it off into this lit up area where there's the where the sunlight is beaming down from you see this thing move off to the right and dash away from the camera or the view of the, the lens but you couldn't make out what it but it looked like it was on his like hind legs and his hands. Like it just kind of ran off. We don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. You know, but still. That stuff is true. For the ones that don't believe it. And the the comments that I've been getting, like I said before, I respect everything that everyone comes at me with. Okay, I respect your thoughts, I respect your comments, I respect your beliefs and ideas about what is out there, what has been seen in those videos. But like I said, they're all real, okay? If you get away from what you believe and just open your mind to everything else, you can get a better perspective on what's real and what's fake, okay? What your government, our government is doing to us and putting out there for us to know about. That's fake. But what you see that can't, what, what it, whatever it is that you see that you can't explain, that is the truth. That's all real. The crazy part is they pulled you away from that for so long, you never experienced what it's like to see that kind of stuff. It's never been around you. So naturally you're going to say, oh, that's not real. That's fake. You know, because most of the time you're probably only going to see it in a in a video. Or you'll see something, but you can't explain it. But you're going to think that you were hallucinating or something like that. Or you had some bad fish or something like that. You know, but trust me, I tell you this all the time. Whatever you saw with your own eyes, you saw it. You weren't hallucinating. Your eyes wouldn't lie to you. Okay? Even if you looked at it for a quick second, you still saw it. Now, if I were to say I saw a tiny little person that looked like a gnome running across my floor, then, yeah, I would be like, what the heck? Did I just see that? Now, there are videos of that on YouTube where you see these kids playing in their room. And all of a sudden, this tiny little dark-looking figure comes running across the floor. 
Now, I'm not going to say that I believe that video. I'm not going to say that I do. But it does look credible. Okay? It does. Now, the videos of these... I, I've seen that there was this one video that I saw where these guys was on a, I think they was on a on a, a dock, and there was this looked like some a female with long hair and a white robe sitting down, and then when they went towards it, trying to figure what that, who that, who that was, she takes off in a shot and runs around the corner. By the time they got around to where she should have been, she was gone. There was nowhere for her to go. There was water here, and nowhere else for her to go. She just vanished. Now, to me, I would say that was an angel that was there for whatever reason. But I don't know. Like I said, that was a video. It could have been just some woman looking like a ghost girl in a white gown running off. You know, it could have been anything. So I don't know. That was a long time ago. I can't even find a video. But my point is, everything that you think is fake or you think is a story or whatever it is you may have read about, about the topics that I have just talked about, like the Anunnaki and demons and all that stuff what you read about is not true you have to get it from people who you know can tell you the truth and that's gabriel peter or even your own guardian angel so i would suggest you get in touch with your guardian angel okay you know connect with their you know connect with their consciousness and they will tell you what you need to know which is what i am going through right now and i am loving every second of it okay so i'm just telling you I've never lied to you guys before. I always bring you the truth. So, you know, if you believe me and if you're my true fans, you know that I'm telling the truth. It may not sound like you could believe it, but if I'm saying it, it's true. Because I'm not going to put no lies on my channel. I'm not. If I, That's why I try to make sure that I go into the information to get as much as I possibly can to make sure there's nothing about it that can't be said. Now, if it's conducive to my channel with what I talk about yeah I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to add my own theories because the evidence puts you in that direction it tells you that something is weird that something weird is going on and it and it plays out a scenario where it makes you think like that where you end up saying okay it just looked like they just vanished off the face of the earth what else could have happened I mean that's all you can say about it if it looks like they disappeared they disappeared the question is how I can tell you how. They were in areas that they shouldn't have been in. And they went through a portal. Plain and simple. So, you know, but that is for the Q&A. If you have any questions, like I said, I will definitely, definitely answer them to the best of my abilities. So, whatever you want to ask me, I'm going to be there. And we'll just go over this stuff again. And I'll, you know, then hopefully it'll shed some light on the subjects in your thoughts but my friends I have to go and like I said I'm going to prepare for that live video and I will be back on shortly so get your your fingers ready to type in those questions because I will be trying to answer as much of them as possible but I know yesterday I said if you got any questions ask away but everybody be coming in like you know five of them at a time so i try to read them because see when it comes up on the screen on my phone it'll be up there for a couple of seconds and it starts to fade away and i can't read it no more and it doesn't show up in the comment section on my computer so i have to get in what i can while i'm actually talking to you through my phone so what i'll probably have to do is take a picture of the of the other question and look at it and read it to you and well not read it to you but read it and answer the question if it comes to that but without further ado you know how I do it, folks. You know how I end every video. And when I do, I will see you in a few more minutes. So, like I said, get, get ready. But I must bid you adieu. Aloha, mahalo, and ahuiho. Peace out, guys. Love you.